Hi, everyone. This is Tom Davis again with Student Athlete World uh, Recruiting. Uh, really, really uh, interesting uh, person to have on today. We have Coach Larry Heinlein of Morgan State Softball. Um, good, good friend. I, I talked to him. I haven't talked to him in a while, but, and this mm -hmm. is actually our our first time on on one of the zooms and everything so uh i'm just going to introduce you larry it, it's your show just give us sure. a little bit of background a little bit of background about about yourself sure sure so um i was a um a baseball player in the beginning i started i played high good high school baseball and then i um, moved on to college i played uh, division two baseball in college and then um, while I was playing baseball, I started playing men's fast pitch um, at, at what we called the double A level then, which was good on my father's team. And um, so I got introduced to the game and I, um, I played the game for a long time. And I, you know, I traveled across the country, you know, playing men's softball, played against some of the best players in the world with some of the best players in the world um, and had a great experience was able to do a lot of things, meet a lot of people, learn the game. I started out as, I started out at third base, then I, uh, then I became a pitcher and worked hard at that, learned how to pitch. And I would say I became, you know, I was a pretty decent pitcher, you know, pretty good, won a, won a couple state championships in Maryland and, um, and then pitched, you know, uh, pitched a lot of games, won, won a fair number of tournaments. And then, you know, arm problems got me out of that. I went back to playing third, played some outfield. And played, uh, you know, still and still play to this day, actually. But along the way, um, you know, I got into uh, into coaching uh, about 13 years ago. Uh, local university, Coppin State University, uh, they had <laughs> they had been on like a 77 game losing streak, and which is not made up. Um, and a friend of mine got an assistant coaching job over there, and he called me up and said, hey, would you like to be an assistant coach as well, take care of the pitchers? And I said, well, sure. Well, we only had one pitcher, so that wasn't too hard of a job. <laughs> uh, but I started there. Um, the team was uh, the, the team was uh, not that good. Again, they were on a 77-game losing streak. Our first year, we won five games. And then uh, the coach and I, uh, the head coach, you know, had left, and then he and I were taking over the team. And we turn it into a 20 plus win season. I, he left after that year and I was head coach for the next, for the next four seasons. So I spent six years at Coppin State. Um, every year I coached there, except for the very first one, we qualified for our tournament, you know, our conference tournament, which, which was unused, you know, what was, wasn't something they were used to. And then they wanted to hire, uh, I was a part-time head coach. They wanted to hire a full-time head coach. So I moved over to Morgan State and this is my seventh year at Morgan. Uh, my first year at Morgan State, while we were coming off like a six-win season, and uh, within a couple of years we were 20-plus wins, at 28 wins a couple of years back. I had real good, uh, real really good success in building the program up. I think we've got some quality wins under our belt. We've beaten teams like Villanova, Hofstra, Towson, you know, teams uh, uh, Toledo. I mean, a lot of teams we've beaten over the last you know three four years uh, that. You know that Morgan State, you know George Washington was another one. That Morgan State, prior to to my uh, tenure there, had never, uh, you know, had never beaten or even come close to beating. So, we've got a we've got a sort of a methodology that we work with, a, a way to a way to recruit as well as a way to you know uh, coach our players to be aggressive and you know play the game smart. And um, so we 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 are fundamentally sound, and that's the approach that I take as a as a um, as a softball coach, and uh, we work, we do less work on drills and more work on fundamental play, knowing where to be, knowing knowing what to do, knowing when to do it, and those kinds of things. And it does pay off even at the Division One level. I think uh, we do a lot of things better than our competition does fundamentally, and uh, so that's able to keep us in the ball games. Um, but that's sort of it in a nutshell. My, I am the head coach, but I'm also the pitching coach. I do have assistants that um, one one takes the outfield um, and handles uh, other situations, and the other is the hitting coach and handles the infield. And so we split up the duties. I'm the I'm the I'm the pitching coach and the strategy coach. 
that's such a thing. Uh, I work I work on the pl all the plays we do and all the stuff we do. So anyway, that's uh, that's sort of my bio. Um, quick and dirty. I don't want to say too much about myself and my playing days, but I played a lot of games and it was fairly successful in the coaching career. I think I'm, you know, reasonably reasonably successful for the level that we are in Division One. We are Division One, and we play good teams. Um, we're not a power five, of course, but we're, you know, uh, I think below that level, we're, we're pretty competitive, um, very competitive back. Excellent. Um, just just for, from you bringing up in your bio, but, you know, before I get into it, you mentioning, you know, hey, you're, you're, you were a baseball guy. Uh, and, you know, now you're, now you're into the softball game. Can you just, you know, make a little comparison about, uh, you know, uh, strategies, uh, differences, uh, well, the way, you yeah. know, coaching, coaching, how, how you go about it? Well, here's the thing. I, I was a baseball guy, and, and I learned how to play the game. Um, I, I mean, I played for a, a very extremely good, well-respected high school coach. I mean, I learned, I learned how the game is supposed to be played. And, and quite frankly, um, I consider um, the strategies and so forth not too far different in baseball and softball. Now, now granted, when I, I switched over playing softball, I was like 20 years old. I was playing softball, you know, full time. So I learned softball, too. I mean, I know. So I'm not like – and that was not like a baseball guy that started to try to coach softball. I mean, I played and played different positions, infield, outfield, and pitcher. But um, the game's still the same. Um, the, you know, um, a lot of the, um, a lot of the sayings I use, I run a lot of things, you know, like never get thrown out when you're behind and, and they'll make the first out of third, last out of third, some of the stuff that everybody accepts, but some of the other inside the game things, you know, they're all from baseball. They, they, they pretty much, uh, you know, uh, and, and I adopted certain things that I do differently than baseball, but just because I, I realize that softball is a little bit different. For example, in baseball, you get a you get a fairly deep fly ball and run on first. They'll go halfway. In my my game, we, I have my catchable fly balls. We tag up all the time, yeah. and um, because you can take that extra base and solve it, only sixty feet away. Sure. In baseball, in baseball, you, you'll never see a guy rarely tag up on first and get to second. You know, on like a fly ball hit, you know, fairly deep in a gap. You know, but in softball, if if you're tagged up, you'll get there ninety percent of the time. So I adopted things like that that I know work in softball that, that don't, you don't necessarily do in baseball. Um, and, of course, that's one of them. I got, I got many of them. But, you know, so the, the transition is the same. I think, um, you know, first and third plays, um, you know, I had some wrinkles to those. You know, we had them in baseball and so forth. And, um, you know, even like you, you do a forced balk in baseball. You know, we used to have that play in high school. And in Kyle, and of course, softball, you can't do a force ball because you can't lead off. But we can do uh, fake, we'll, fake steals. We do, we get a big lead and, and, and bait the catcher into throwing down to first or second and, and move that. So we have other things we do that, you know, would be analogous to like a force ball or things like that. Um, so, yeah, no, I think, it, you know, if you take a good, and, and, and I guess Myers, who was coaching at uh, last stop was Auburn before that uh, Arizona State. I mean, he came from coaching baseball and jumped right into softball and he is extremely successful. So the, the principles are the same. You just got to get used to the pitcher throwing underhand. You can't lead off the bases till the ball is out of their hand. So. Oh, cool. Um, getting in, getting in a little bit uh, recruiting and all that. I mean, you know, you've, you've been, been at Coppin and now you're at Morgan state and all that. Um you know, I know I've talked to you uh, about kids recruiting and everything. Now we're in the COVID era. Uh, D1, I know it's frustrating when you're in a dead period and everything. Give me kind of your COVID sum up as far as, uh, you know, Morgan State and what you can do at the D1 level as far as recruiting. Well, here's what's here's interesting, and 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 where I am, I'm, Morgan State is an HBCU, historically black college university. So we we um, um, hang on a second. We um, 
we, we have, and we're a small school, so we're a different sort of division one, although we're division one in every other aspect. Um, and we have a fine school with a fine, um, you know, um, you know, uh, student base. But it, it, so, but having said that, I, I don't go too far. This is just me personally. I don't go too far out like some of the bigger schools do. I'm, in other words, right now, I, you know, I wouldn't be, I'm not looking at 23s, 2023 graduates. I'm starting on the 22s. I, I think it's, it's, it's better for me to not chase, and I use the word chase loosely, to not chase kids too far in advance. I mean, I, I, have, I, have to get, I have to get them when they're further down the road, and that's my approach. Um, um, so, um, but that makes that, you know, it, it, it sounds like I'm getting what's left over from the power fives, but I don't think I'm in competition with the power fives. I think it's just a better, it's a better approach for me. And, and so having said that, um, I think it, you know, it, this COVID business has, has hurt me probably, you know, in, in, in my, you know, strata here a, a little more than the power fives. They already, they already have their 21s and 22s lined up. Sure. You know, I'm still looking at 21s. And so, and uh, I still have some openings and um, I couldn't get out this summer at all, you know, to see any of them where they, you know, where that would have been my sweet spot, get a kid who's, who's good, but didn't quite, you know, find their school yet. So it hurt me a lot. And the 22s as well, I couldn't see any of them. Now you, you try to do, you know, athletes go live and you do um, sometimes Facebook or wherever else they get themselves on and you try to watch that. But, you know, the only ones you can really watch really are the pitchers to see what they throw, but then you don't know what kind of hitters they're facing. And you really can't see how fast they're throwing. You know, I mean, you get, you get some feeling, you get, but so I guess the, you know, it, we tried to do the best we can with video and, and getting the game film. And, and, I, and I think the bottom line, the bottom takeaway message is risk. We have to assume more risks now than ever before in recruiting a kid. You just can't see them. So luckily we've seen some of them previously, um, you know, like the previous year, but not many, not many. And so, so I, I, I take on that risk, calculated risk, make sure you talk to the coaches more. You talk to the kid several times, the, the, the player several times. Um, you study the film like no other. You try to look for everything you can to take away from that film. And, and it's incumbent upon the student athlete to provide the coach with all those things, to, to be responsive, you know, to help the coach out because they can't sit behind the, dug, uh, behind the dugout or behind the, you know, fence and watch you now. They got to, you know, so you got to be more proactive as a student athlete. Exactly. That's a, that's key. I use that with with my kids and that I coach and 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 clients. That you have to be proactive. You you know aggressive. Go go out. Get your message. Get coaches everything that they need and all that. You know, it's funny. I mean, when you're talking about you know uh, a lot of people have been live streaming and uh, you know I have coaching friends across, across the country. And, you know, it's like you said, while it's good and you can see, you know, this little bit of everything that's going on. I mean, they're like, you can't see the ball and everything. No, I, 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 I talk, I talk to my kids all the time, coach about, you know, what, how, how to carry yourself, how, how you go about the game. And, and that was the other thing that coaches said, they're like, Hey, I can't see, you know, the, the camera doesn't follow that kid and show reaction and all that to adversity. Yeah. Talk about that a little bit. I mean, how much of a part does, does you know, attitude and, and, and your mental thing being locked in, being a team player, doing everything right yeah. like that, how much you know, does that go into it for you? No, it means a lot. I mean, uh you know, you hear coaches talk about it all the time, and they're right. Um, when we go, we look. I watch the kid. I watch them on the bench. I watch what they're doing, and and if they're acting strangely or or, or you know doing other things, I, I certainly would get turned off by it. I, I, I um, there's not things I look for them to do wrong. I just kind of get the overall impression how they, 
you know, how they hustle on the field, how they hustle off. You know, you know, when they take – if they're playing shortstop, how, how do they take the – you know, like the ground balls that the pitcher – I mean, excuse me, the first baseman throws to them and they throw to first. You know, how, how they – just how they carry themselves. And then you, you, you can kind of – you can – you know, it sounds so silly. I judge a player a lot of times how they walk into the park. I mean, you might say, well, I could say that that's a player. They're, they hold sure. themselves confidently. They carry their bag a certain way. And, and, and um, they just get their shoes on a certain way. I mean, just, they, they look like they're ready to play. And they're not, you know, goofing off and giggling and laughing. And not that that's a bad thing. But you look for the, the person that's there for business. And it's business time. And, you know. So, you know, I, I, I hear the stories where they ask their mother for, a, 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 you know, a bottle of water and stuff like that or whatever. I, I, I kind of like don't focus on that too much, but I focus on how they just carry themselves. And you can tell. I mean, I got one kid that plays for me. I went to watch her play. And just within five minutes, that kid's a player. She just, just, just watched her run onto the field, do her thing, and it's like she's a player. And she yeah. came to me. She plays for me. And she's a fresh – well, she's a freshman – second time around because of COVID. But she was everything I thought she was, and I got that impression in the first five minutes. Excellent. Um, go a little, let's uh, go into it. You know, I, you, you talked about it a little bit. Um, how many How many young ladies do, do you have on your roster? This year, it'll be 23. Uh, I would like to have 20. I think 20 is my favorite number with regards to this. First off, it does a couple of things. You can be plenty deep at most positions. I like I like having at least four pitchers. I think that's maybe five, but certainly four. Any less than four uh, uh, competent pitchers. I mean, I you know, uh, pitchers that you can put in a game and, and know you're going to get a couple of innings out of at least. Um, and I like to have three catchers. So there, I'm already at seven. So that's 13 for the other eight positions. And I think it gives you a little bit of depth. So I think 20 is a good number, but 23 is fine. Any more than that, I don't think I can handle, um, or, or nor what I want to handle. Um, you, you want competition for positions? Sure. Absolutely important. But you don't want to have um, some, some people who are, you know, third, fourth stringers. They're never going to get in because that's how some of your problems start. You know, kids who think they check the portals out. I mean, the portal's like, you know, yeah. wildly uh, uh, used. Um, you know, people go to go into places and, you know, they thought they were going to get a chance and they did get a chance, but in their mind, they didn't get a chance. Um, I, don't, I think any coach worth their salt. And that's one of the things the kids got to understand. You know, I don't make up the lineup. You know who makes up the lineup? The players do. They, they, they make it up. They, they, they make me play them, <laughs> whether I like them or not. And, and if you're a good coach, if you're a good coach, the players, the players, right, they're not names in the lineup. And, you know, they do that extra stuff in practice. They, you know, they dive for that ball. They, they back up the throws. They do it. You don't have to tell them anything. They just go do it. And then they perform in practice and you go, you know, I, so-and-so has got to play. And that's how, that's how that lineup gets written. Exactly. Um, talk a little, a, a little bit, um, as far as your philosophy, like the different coaches have different things. Some like to get a lot of bangers, uh, you know, um, people that can can really drive the ball, have power. There's people that like yeah. speed. There's people that like the small ball game and everything like that. Coach, what what's what's your philosophy? I know I know that you'd love to be able to sit there and say, "Oh yeah, I can go out and get that all the time." Yeah and everything but basically what is your your philosophy and the way that style that you like to play the game well i i i like um i like contact hitters i like hitters that don't strike out do you do a lot with people don't first off i, I again where i am i did a i did a little analysis of of how many home runs per game team teams hit okay so you'll go from the top of the line where like the power fives and, and then they, they'll have, you know, their games in the beginning of the year with against lesser competition out of conference and stuff. But the top, the top power fives will get one and a half home runs a game. Okay. So if they play, you know, 50, uh, you know, they'll get at least one and a half, you know, the middle of the road 
the, if you take the power fives out of there in the middle of the road, D1 team is going to get a half a home run a game. You know, and, and, and a lot of them are like 0. 0.75, um, you know, home runs a game. So right there, I'm not going to go. I, I, I can't go get the big boppers because of, of where, I, where I sit in the pecking order of things. Sure. So, so I like to get some girls, some pop in the bat and, um, and uh, you know, get some pop in the bat. But I really would go for defense and ability to make contact. You know, because defense, of course, um, you know, of course, and we'll get to that in a second, but defense is great. But girls that can run, hit the ball, get on base. And I say run, I don't mean, you know, a two, six home to first. I mean, girls that, 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 that are good base runners, smart base runners. Um, we do a lot of things. I mean, I, 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 I'll give an example of some of the stuff we do that you, you don't see other teams do. Like when we take our lead at first base, you don't go back until the ball gets to back to the pitcher. You know, you'll see girls, and same with that, especially second base. You go out, you keep the pressure on the catcher the whole game. Sure. You don't go back. You, you can watch the Women's College World Series. Girl takes the lead, the catcher catches the ball, they run back to the base. There's no, there's no earthly reason to run back because if every time you're off that base with the, with the idea that you're going to the next base, the catcher is always looking at you. And then we'll do, then we'll do like a fake steal where we start off like we're going and stop and then come back. I mean, we do things like that so where the catcher is always on, you know, especially on second base. <laughs> I'm giving my strategy away, but you know what? You still got to stop. <laughs> you know, especially on second base. We, we'll get some teams, we'll fake steal third every single time. We'll start like we're stealing third. And then we stop. So the catcher's confronted with, do I throw down the second? Do I run at them? And then we'll stop. And then, you know, if they don't do anything, we go back. So, and so when we do steal third, it's like it's, they don't know what's happening. They think it's the same thing we do every play. They can't do it all the time, you know, but we like to keep pressure on the other team all the time. And, and it, it works. It absolutely works. And that's our style. That's my style. Um, and so I got to have kids that can do that. If I got kids that, you know, run like they have a piano on their back, it, 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 you know, they better hit home runs. They better have, you know, but I've had in my whole coaching career, my 13 years, I've had one kid hit over 10 home runs, you know, so actually two, both of them the same season. And so that was it. One hit, one hit like 12 and one hit 10. And so after that, I mean, I get kids hit three or four home runs. I got it there. They hit a lot. So they better. And I also love bunning. i not, not bunning for base hits, but bunning, you know, I think uh, two years ago, uh, the girl led the team, our team in RBIs was was like our eighth hitter and you know how she got all these rbis runners on third and bunting them home wow. <laughs> I mean, she led the team in rbis by bunting runners home from third and and, and next and so, you're gonna, next you're gonna tell me she was a lefty no she was a right-handed batter I was she, right. <laughs> she wasn't particularly fast um but she could we we would send the runner and that wasn't a suicide but it was like a you know a real strong safety squeeze and if that ball hit on the ground, our girl's already running. But she had, I don't know, she had like 16 RBIs and they all were, they all were on bunts, which is, a, which is a nutty, a nutty kind of statistic, but that's, that's what it was. So, so that's the kind of, you know, and you put pressure on you, especially even, and you think teams would know you, the teams that know you, they, they hate it even worse because they're waiting for you to do something. So they'll make errors of commission because, you know, they'll know, you know, you know, I mean, we got we we had one team so so confused that the catcher was run. It's a Division One team was running the ball out to the pitcher to like twenty feet of pitcher and doing it. They were afraid to throw the ball. Now that's that's pretty good stuff because now now you now you're you know you're you're rent free in their heads you know so. Exactly. But so you, I'm answering your question. What kind do I like? I like scrappy players. Hit for average. Hit hit the ball. Don't strike out. Good base runners. Aggressive base runners. Run with their heads up. And, um, you know, that, well, that's, that's I mean, it, you know, and, and I like I like that, too. And, you know, what that actually leads to and, and and something maybe that I can add on is when you're when you pressure teams like that with that kind of game, you get into their whole game. It's like you're saying the catcher running stuff out there. Yeah. Pitchers, pitchers are constantly, constantly thinking, you know, about the runner. 
do you make, do they make a mistake to the hitter the, and, right. and the hitter gets, you know, a better pitch to hit than yeah. everything. I mean, I can go back. I, I always go back and then, then I'll get you right back in here. But short story, uh, when I was pitching in the Red Sox organization and in spring training, we played mm -hmm. the St. Louis Cardinals. And this is back when they had Vince Coleman, Ozzie sure. Smith, Tommy Her, and they just, St Willie McGee. They, I mean, they got on. I can remember I made a stupid mistake and I walked Vince Coleman and I see him leading off. It looked like he was 30 feet off the bat. <laughs> and, you know, just that constant thing. Throwing That's why they call it the big leagues. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, they pressure you with that running game and it does. And then, you know, they're, they weren't a big power team back then. Uh, Jack Clark came in a little bit later, but, you know, they would, they would run and they would hit and run. And the next thing you know, I mean, you got all that speed going around the merry-go-rounds on the bases. Oh, yeah. It all adds up. So that's a, that's a great point. Um, I think that, that, you know, we've already covered in, in, in this, this the, the last thing, you know, the kind of players you're looking for pitching wise. What, what essentials are you looking for in pitchers to come to Morgan State? Well, you know, there's obviously the, 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 the standards, uh, my standards are probably similar to everybody else's, but uh, I might have a little twist to them. First off, um, you, you got to throw strikes. You, you got you got to be in command, and it's not you know, it, it, you know. I, I was watching a video of a girl today, and um, you could tell she had command. She didn't throw particularly hard, but she had command. Command and 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 location is the most important thing, um, you know, that you can bring to a uh, you know bring to the rubber in a college game. And second is change of speeds, you know, and and so. You know, it, it, I pitch myself and, you know, and I've seen, it's been around some of the best pitchers in the world and, and their biggest attribute, all the big best pitchers was their, their, their location, where they could put the ball. Now, granted, you can't play division one college football, college football, college softball, throwing 52 miles an hour. You, you got to have a certain, certain minimum speed. You know, you, you, you can, you can pitch competitively at 56, 57, you're gonna. You better have make no mistakes. 59, 60. If you got great location, you can you can play and beat anybody in the country. Now, granted, you got to have a good change up, and you got to have. And then then comes the movement, and then finally the speed. You know, but you got you got to start off with a minimum amount of speed. But I tell you what, you're gonna have pit, uh, hitters talking to themselves if if you can put that ball where you want to and move it a little bit. Uh, so so anyway, that that's sort of my pecking order. Can can she throw? You know, and I watch, you know what I watch too? And I don't know if other coaches that I watch their warm-up pitches. If you get a girl, if the warm-up pitches are, 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 are crappy, I that pitcher's never gonna be good. The warm-up pitches like between innings, sure. that should be like pop, 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 pop. No, you see some of them, the balls all over the place. It's like <laughs> and then then you're gonna have to have a batter in there, and then you gotta throw not just a strike, a strike at the knees on the outside corner. Well, if you if you can't throw your warm-up pitches, I mean, I'm telling my pitchers, concentrate on your warm-up pitches. What well, you know, the, the the first one is like, you know, if I had pitchers that pitch for me, the first one's in the dirt, you know, coming out of their hand the wrong way, and I'm going, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're not, you know, your pitcher's got to focus every. If you're just playing catch, you know, just just starting to warm up, your pitches aren't all over the place. You know, they got to be, and I, and I mean, like I'll come in and 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 we'll do a drill or something, you know. And I'll jump in, and, and if I'm demonstrating something, I don't even need to warm up. I'll throw, I'll throw a perfect strike down the middle. And I'll even tell my pitchers, you should be able to do that anytime you want. And I don't, I'm not throwing it hard, but just, you know, that's what you focus on. Because I've learned how that I can just put that ball, boom, right there. And so if you got that, you can pitch, uh, you can pitch anywhere. And so, and then, and then, then we also work on what, what our pitcher's strengths are. Okay. So, it, it, I, I'll hear kids, you know, say they go to such such a school, and um, the, the 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 pitching coach and the coach says, uh, "We don't want you throwing rise balls to the pitcher." And 
and they go, well, I have a decent rise ball. Yeah, but we already got somebody that throws rise balls. You, 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 you got to concentrate on screwball and curveballs. Now, I've heard this many more times than once. <laughs> so it's like, no, no, no. I, I go to the pitcher's strength, and, and, but I also know that sometimes I can make a strength out of a, a pitcher um, when, when other people may not see it. For example, I had one kid who was probably, she was probably a division three prospect, nice little pitcher, but she could hit too. So, but she's playing for me at Coppin. She had good control and she could pitch inside, right? And she had a curve ball, she could pitch away. So here was the deal. And she had a change up, she threw, she was a phenomenal change up, but she could only throw it for a strike two out of 10 times at, at best. But when it was there, it was good. But I learned that she had a rise ball, but if she threw it out over the plate, they'd hit it out of the park. But if she threw it up and in, she'd get a lot of like fly balls and foul balls and fly balls. So whenever we called a rise ball, it was never out, never up and away. It was in. So now she had another pitch. Whereas if you were another, you know, if you some other organization, they say, well, her rise ball gets hit out of the park. Well, not if you throw it inside. And that she never gave up a home run on a, on a rise ball inside. <coughs> so I, you, you, you got to take the pitchers that you have and maximize what they can do. And if it's, you know, and the kid, the kid could throw inside. And I remember one time, it's no joke. I called 22 straight inside drop balls. <laughs> and, and most the team was mostly right-handed batters, 22 straight. Same, you know, same, same signal down for each one. And the catcher kept looking at me. I go, you know, you know, it's what I'm calling. And she, she was flying along, getting ground balls, short, you know, ground balls, you know, pop-ups, ground balls. Now, I don't recommend that all the time. You got to mix up the pitches, but sure. that's what she was doing best. And so that's my philosophy on, on pitching. You, 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 you tailor your pitcher to the situation, to her skills. And, you know, you know that's, that's, that, that's why I think I'm, I'm able to take some pitchers who, you know, might not be the most talented, but then can compete a little bit, you know, at times better than, than you would think. Cool. Um... Lastly, I mean, you know, talk, we're going to talk about, I mean, you, you, you touched on it a little earlier, just the recruiting process. And, yeah. you know, in, in, in my business, you know, I work, work as a recruiting, a recruiting uh, consultant and everything else. I mean, uh, I, ideally, um, you know, girls are looked at at a younger age just because, number one, that maturity wise i mean they 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 get there before boys and everything like yeah. that and you know you were saying okay you know i'm still looking for 21s with twos and, and everything like that um you know idea ideally if you if you you know, get information on a kid. I mean, how, about how old, Coach, or, you know, what grade would you like to start getting information on them so that you could see? I mean, I like to, I like to get girls early. I always tell them, I said, you know, I get their <laughs> updates um, and show their progression. If, I, if we well, can always show a coach their progression from where they were and going through, it's like telling a story to a coach. Well, you know, I'm probably not your prototypical coach. So keep that in mind and, and, and take what I say with a grain of salt. You probably talk to 20 other coaches and you'll get, you'll get a far different view of the world than me. But I, um, like right now, um, I maybe have my eye on one or two 2023s. Sure. Just because I don't believe that where, where I come from and where I am, that girls who are in the class of 2023 will be seriously looking at me. They're, I find that a lot of them have dream schools. They have, they want to, they, they, they're they misled, either misleading themselves or by their parents or by their coaches that they can play for Florida and, and Alabama and all this other business, or even, even like higher mid-major schools. And so for me to focus on them, the, you know, the, the, the universe is much bigger. So I, I, you know, uh, I'm not doing many 2023s at all. 2022s, I'm in that ball game right now. I'm in that ballpark. You can talk to them now, obviously. You can't talk to 2023s, but you can talk to 2022s. And, you know, I'm, I, you know, 
I'm putting in a, uh, you know, calls to them, approaching them. But then again, I, you know, I, I, I got to play careful because I don't want to chase, I don't want to chase the ones that just really aren't interested. And, um, but um, anyway, I, I was going to train a thought here. So you, you, you want to know what my philosophy though, the recruiting is, right? Uh, I, I call a kid and, and I, I, you know, I basically see if they're interested in me. And a lot of times, most of the time, I only call a, a, a student, student athlete, if they email me first. I don't really uh, go cold calling, you know? Okay. I, I will, and I have, but um, I really, I'll respond to ones that either the recruiter contacts me or they contact me via email. So then I'll call them up. And then um, the first test is, you know, do you know anything about my school? And if they say no, I, I, I'm okay, I say, okay well, you know, I'll give you, a, you know, I'll give them a Reader's Digest uh, sort of a presentation and say, that. I say, listen, you know, I'm going to introduce you and then I'll call you back in a week, which is like the required, you know, waiting time. And I say, would you like me to call you back? And, I, and they say, yeah. Or if they say, yeah, they'll all say, yeah. Okay. So then, so then, then, then I, when I call them back, they should know everything about the school, what their major is, and da, 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 da. And then, and then if they don't do all that, then I know they're not interested, okay? Right. And, and a lot of times, if, uh, if I know they're really interested, they'll send me a thank you note. So little, little courtesy things, little things like that. If they're not on board early on and showing me some interest in return, uh, I'm out. I'm, I, I won't keep pursuing them because they, they got to, <laughs> it's a two-way street. They got to want me, and I want me to uh, commit, but they got to be interested enough in me at the same level I'm interested in them, mm -hmm. you know, and they sent me. And the, th the worst thing can happen is kids send the coach an email, especially this coach, and then act like, why is he calling me? Why is he, you know, you know, don't send out blast emails. For most of the time, if it says, hey, coach, I won't answer it. If it says, hey, coach, Heinlein, then, then, then they got me a little bit closer. But if it's, if it's a generic, hey, coach, I, I generally don't answer them. But, but they got, and then I like when they say, hey, you know, I like Morgan State because X, Y, and Z, and that X, Y, and Z is correct, you know. Yeah. So that means that they did something already. So, so it's, it's, I, it's incumbent upon the player to, to show that they are interested. Don't, don't send it out to everybody. Just pick out places that you're interested in. And then you have a really good chance the coach will be happy, especially this coach here. Yeah. Uh, if you say you're interested in me, then you got me, you know, you know, I had a movie, uh, you had me at hello. Well, they had me at the email. If they said, just say the right things. Um, and the, you know, so, and then, and then like, if it's a 21, you know, let's, let's say we're in the year now that they, uh, I'll have another litmus test. I'll say, okay, do you, you want to keep talking to me, you know, next week or whatever. And they'll say, yeah. I says, well, here's what I'd like you to do. I said, have you, have you committed anywhere? No, no. Am, am, am I at least in the running? Oh, absolutely. Okay. And I'm, I'm giving you a sort of a, you know, scenario. I say, well, here's what I'd like you to do. I'd like you to apply to our school. Okay. So apply to school, you know, uh, you, you're going to apply to places anyway, apply to our school and get the ball rolling in case we get to that point. And, and guess what? The ones that don't apply, they'll never come. Exactly. It's almost like, it's almost like the, you know, do, do I trust you? You trust me. If you, if you say you're going to apply and you apply, so even if you start apply, you know, send in your transcripts, fill out the application online, do a little bit of this. You can even say, hey, coach, I'm halfway done. It. Okay. If they did, if I call them back or, you know, we talk again and they haven't done it, I know they're not interested. So that's my little, little sort of shtick that I do. You know, I got to make sure that they, they're interested in me and it's, we're walking down this path together. If, if a lot of times they won't answer my texts, they won't answer my emails, they, you know, and so, you know, I, I, I sort them out that way, you know. Yeah. Because you'll be surprised. You, a kid will send you an email, and they may even say all kinds of good things and have your name right and all this other stuff. You email them back, you never hear from them again. It's sure. Like, so anyway, so I'm yeah, not chasing I, that one around either. I mean, yeah, I, I mean, I deal with so many kids, and it, it, it's so – I'm so glad that you that, that you came out and and were like that because I talk about that all the time. You know what? It, what you're saying is 
hey, we want to establish a relationship. And I tell them, I'm like, yeah, you're interested and, and, and we're sending stuff there and, and you get the ball rolling. You know what? Um, yeah, I, one, of, one of my main things is, you know, when you, answer, when you answer a coach, you know, hey, thank you so much and everything like that, and, and you've yeah. answered their questions, I, I always tell them at the end of the email in, in, or, or your conversation, get, ask the coach a question. And they're like sitting there low. Why? I said, you want them to answer, right? You, you want to see, you want to see what it is. And you're, you're, say, you're, you're seeing what, what answers we have. Exactly. And I mean, you know, and, and, and it, and it goes both ways. I said, you know, coaches pick up it's, and, and you say it, small little things and everything like that. And I'm like, you know, don't poo poo anybody or whatever and it, you're saying. And it's such a shame. I mean, you know, people take the, the time to show, you know, hey, you know, we're interested in you a little bit, but you know, we're going to give you a little test and, you know, a little homework and, you know, it's like you said, you give the call and you're like, okay, now, you know, we, we have your major and all and, Oh yeah. You know what coach? Cause like on, on our profile coach, they have, they have what's called a, a, you know, a student athlete world college match where they can go in and look, uh, we have all the information on Morgan state. So then, you know, go in softball division one, uh, look in Maryland or or the region, and there's all the Division One programs there. Go down, Morgan State View Info. There's your name. There, you click on your name, email, everything like that. School website, athletic website, in-state, out-of-state tuition, all that stuff. Academic rating, and I'm like research everybody i mean they, this is probably you're you're looking at this as the major event in your life going into 18 years right. do do your homework and do yourself justice you know what i tell you know what i tell kids um I, and I, 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 when i use the word kids I, I mean they're young ladies and 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 most of them are adults so i use it just as a as a term of endearment but you, you know i tell them i said even even if, like, let's say you make a visit when it's it's okay to make a visit, or even if you go down this road and find out a lot about Morgan State and then choose not to come, it's not wasted time. Because what it, what it does, it, it provides you a framework of what you're looking for. So even if you spend the time looking at Morgan State, you go, okay, these are the positives. These are the negatives. These are what I like, what I don't like. This is what, you know, sets it apart. You know, all those kinds of things. And then you, you get a basis and you put that here and you go, okay, this, let's say it doesn't work for me. Mm -hmm. When you go to your next school, you've already gone down a path where you're, you, you knew what to look for. You, you, and then, then, then you go, well, Morgan State had this. I didn't pick Morgan State, but, you know, their, their let's say their uh, business program was really good. And, and so, and it had these features. How does this school's business program? Yeah, you know, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't pick Morgan. But I learned a lot about their business program, and I'm going to look at this school's business program. So, so the knowledge base is increased because you looked at Morgan State, exactly. even though you didn't pick us. So, so it's a win-win. It's a win if you come, and it's a win if you don't come because you've used that time and made yourself more aware of what's out there. I tell people when they come to our library, look at our library. When you, if, you, if, if you don't like Morgan State, we go to the next school's library, say, is their library as good as Morgan State's? You know, and we have a great library. And so that's why I brought it up. Sure. But it's their library. And, and so you're weighing stuff. And as you go down the road, you, 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 you get this whole, you become skilled in what's out there and available. <coughs> I think it's a no-lose proposition. If you're, if you're somewhat interested and you, you, you have a, a sort of a minimum genuine interest, do the work. Do, do, put the time in because you end up better than yourself whether you go there or not. Exactly right. Well, Coach, I appreciate I sure. appreciate you coming on here, and and it was great. Um, you know, got some insight in, into your program and school, and <laughs> sure. and into you, and um, you know, I'll continue to sit there and send you. I actually have a, a twenty-two and a twenty-three, and all that 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 I'm gonna gonna send you as well as uh, I have a great class of twenty-fours, but you're not there yet. <laughs> 
I'm but, not um, on 24 jet. Uh, no, but <laughs> and listen, hey, you know where I am. I mean, you know, I'd like to be, um, but um, I'll let Florida and, and, and Alabama and, uh, <laughs> you know, Texas you know, take care of them first and we'll see. I got you. Well, I, I appreciate everything you do and taking the time to sit down and talk to us. And uh, very informative and, and some, yeah. some great tips on, on, you know, inside the program and on recruiting. So thank you so much. Yeah. And, and I appreciate it. And anything you need, you know, you, you know how to get in touch and, with me. And, and we've, we've been talking for a lot of years now. Feel free to call me anytime. Absolutely. You take right. care, Coach. All right, Don. See you. Okay. Yep. Bye-bye.